Okay, I think this is a great time for another stop and jot. So let's pull back to a conscious level the three big concepts of this section of study. Grab your Module 4 handout and let's get started. We started with the concept of academic language and roughly defined it as the language used in classrooms to help students develop content knowledge and the language needed to convey an understanding of ideas and concepts. We then identified the two kinds of academic language as instructional language and discipline-specific language. Instructional language being the type of language of teaching, language that gets students thinking about and engaged in this new information. Discipline-specific language is the specialized language of vocabulary, syntax, etc., specific to a discipline or topic of study. We then talked about a couple of language use frameworks. The first one we discussed was Halliday's Functions of Language, which provides teachers with ways to analyze student conversation. Halliday identified seven functions of student talk. The first being instrumental, which relates to talk designed to get things done, such as asking someone for help with something. Regulatory language is talk that sets tasks for others to do, such as saying, you do that one. The third function is known as interactional, and it refers to talk that aids in getting along with others. Halliday then classifies personal talk as language that expresses personal feelings and opinions. Heuristic talk is talk that leads to inquiry and investigation of things within their environment. The last two functions he labeled as imaginary and representational language. Imaginary talk is talk used in telling stories, creating things, etc., and representative talk deals with the communication of information by telling or stating information. Again, the purpose of this framework was to provide teachers a way of determining the type of talk most used by their students. So if only lower level talk was being used, instruction could be provided to promote higher levels of language use, and we want students to use all language functions. The second framework we discussed was one known as the Edwards Groves, Anstey, and Bulls type of talk framework, and it was connected to teachers and their use of language, instead of that used by students. They identified three broad functions or ways that teachers use language throughout instruction. The first was classified as organization talk, which basically related to management tasks. This could be in light of classroom management tasks or literacy information management, such as look at page four. The second function was labeled doing literacy, which was then broken into three talk types, reconstruction or restatement, elaboration or projection, and informative. Reconstruction or restatement is talk that paraphrased or repeated student responses. Laboration or projection was talk that pushed students to deeper or inferential thinking. And informative was talk that provided more information or definition about literacy topics. The last type of teacher talk, according to these researchers, was given a longer title, learning how, when, and why about literacy, and was divided into two sub-functions, process and utility. Process talk focused on the cognitive aspects behind a literacy task. What is a better way to do that? And utility talk refers to explanations about processes that are used in developing literacy. An example of utility language is when we say things to students and that we hope will not only help them with the task at hand, but that can then be transferred to other situations, such as, when we read, it is important that we work through and think about each word in the sentence. So three broad functions of language are used by teachers, and teachers need to be sure that all levels of talk are used in the classroom, especially the learning how, when, and why about literacy. So our stop and jot helped us recap three new big ideas, an understanding of academic language, the fact that there are different functions of language, and also different types of language used when communicating. Okay. Take a deep breath and let's learn more about oral language.